Hi everyone, we're into the Precision Golf Fitting Lab here. We're here to discuss custom golf clubs compared to off the rack golf clubs and the benefits of coming in for a fit in Precision Golf. Ray, what do you hear, what, what do you see between the two? What, what, what are your feedback on that? I guess uh, we get a little bit more in depth when we're doing a, a custom club fit versus off the rack. Right, an off the rack golf club would be just walking into a, a golf store, buying something that you see, non-adjustable, standard shaft, everything just basic as it comes. With our options here at Precision Golf, obviously we get more in depth about you know, adjustability in heads, adjustable shafts, weights, lie angle, length, grip size, grip, op grip options. There's so many different things when we get in depth about a custom club fitting versus walking into a golf shop, basically just buying something off the rack, like we said, and being able to be fitted to that customer versus their height, their golf swing. Everything matters comparable to what they do when they just walk in, in a golf store and buy something off the rack. So for example, Ray, let's say, for example, we've got a golf club like this. Now, if you went and bought something like this off the rack and somebody went out to go play this, and let's say, for example, the line was not right for them. So could you show the people out there what may happen and, and what might happen with the actual ball flight when this is wrong? Yeah, depending on, on their angle of attack, obviously, which is a big thing using TrackMan while we're doing the fitting, but the lie angles get adjusted on each and every different head depending on how they're delivering the club into the impact zone. Whether it's upright, whether it's flat, whether it's going to be standard. There's so many different options. It's not just one thing where you walk into a golf store. A standard off the rack club would be just a dead standard lie angle. Uh, height could be more upright. Uh, shorter people could be a little bit flatter. But it shows where the club will come into the impact zone, whether they hit it fat, where they hook it, they fade it. We adjust these lie angles depending on what the customer does at impact with the strike. So it makes a major difference, doesn't have the correct lie angle. Yeah, correct. So for example, if you've got the club coming through here and it hits square, that club face will go through square. So you're gonna have a direct shot straight where, where you wanna hit. If you get a taller player and that lie angle is not correct and that club hits the ground here, that club now spins out, which is gonna cause more of a right shot for you. And vice versa, if you're a little bit shorter, the toes up, it hits there, it's gonna close that face and you're gonna be forever looking for the golf ball left. Now, for example, on that one, Ray, you've got the, the lie angle out of the way. Now, what about length of shaft? What are you seeing the length of the golf shaft there and how it affects that player as well? Well, that's critical as well. I mean, we look at, uh, again, you, you, know, you walk into a golf store and you, you buy a set of clubs and sitting on the rack, they're all gonna be standard length. I mean, I'm a little bit taller, being close to six foot tall. Brad's a bit shorter than me, so I'd go a little bit longer in my length of, of shaft. He'd be shorter, depending on how tall you are, but that'll all come down to, again, the lie angle versus what your length is going to be. These are all majorly important things. If you don't have these things correct, it goes pear-shaped fast, even with a good golf swing. So even, so even getting on that one, Ray, length of shaft's really important because if you're trying to swing a golf club or trying to improve your swing, it affects where your posture is. So a taller, taller person won't be able to get into a correct posture with an incorrect length. They'll be more bent over or they'll squat down through their legs. So getting that length r really helps their golf swing and teach themselves a proper habit uh, moving forward rather than creating a bad one straight away. Basically not using a Band-Aid. You know, we can make this, adjust it to the player's ability and we're actually trying to take them to, don't we, at the same time. Yeah. So it's an improvement in golf swing, but obviously having the correct gear, it's majorly beneficial, isn't it, moving forward? Definitely. So let's say, for example, we do a test in a second and we're going to hit an older club versus a newer one and something that suits us versus something that may not suit us. What do you, what, what do you expect to see in, in, in the difference compared to a custom set versus something that's off the rack or something that's older? And obviously that's a good question, but in today's you know, age and era with you know, trampolines in the middle of golf clubs these days basically because there's more, there's more bang for the buck in them versus you know, something that was 20 years old like we see over here in the Northern Beaches. A lot of the golfers over here have old sets of golf clubs. So they're getting left behind from their friends by not updating and customising their clubs to, for their golf swing. And obviously, you know, new technology, we've moved forward a long way, haven't we? So how much, how much further would we expect to hit a, a newer state iron compared to 
a an older one from 20 or 30 years ago. Yeah, I'd say it'd be a good carry 25 to 30 metres. I think we're seeing now from an old cast iron versus you know a new forged iron yeah. or something just more in the newer range. You're going to have more forgiveness whether it hits the toe or the heel, uh, more sweet spot. It just makes it easier. And and the one thing that uh, you know the customer out there should really know as well. Your, your golf clubs from 20, 30 years ago, um, the big thing that's changed over the years is a proper golf ball. Now at Precision Golf here, we use premium golf balls on our, on our golf range, and that helps you get the proper numbers to help you gauge the distance correctly for these days. Years ago, the golf ball was more lower launching, higher spin, and the golf clubs were built differently for that, yeah. weren't they, Ray? Yeah. So now, uh, in nowadays, the golf ball is more higher launching, lower spin. So the weightings and everything in the golf club set up for that. Yeah. And, and that alone helps for lower spin rates, uh, more distance naturally just from that. Yeah. It's the same with, you know, we get into drivers now and things like that. Um, we've got a lot of exotic shafts, so to speak. So they're ones that aren't off the rack. Uh, we talk about low, mid, high kick points, spin rates, they get dram dramatized, right? So let's say uh, someone comes in with a a club head speed of around 100 miles an hour and they've walked into a golf shop and they've got a regular shaft. This thing's going to be usually, I, I use the analogy of someone having a piece of rope in their hand with a golf club on the end of it. The club face is going to waver, it's going to be all over the place at impact. It'll change impact location, spin rate numbers. You can swing it as fast as you want but if you've got the wrong kick point or wrong shaft, the ball's going to spin and it's not going to go as far. It's as simple as that. Definitely. All right, mate, well, what we should do is let's give a couple of these older clubs a try and we'll go from there. Yep, thanks for listening. All right, guys, here we are. We're gonna do the test. So we're going a bit crazy here. We're taking a really old club. This one's about 20 or 30 years old. Maxfly 5-iron that you can see there against a modern day uh, Mizuno. We've got the Hot Metal Pro here and that's in a 7-iron. So you can sort of see here, this is the adjustability so I can make it, make it suit Ray for his lie angle, for his shaft and everything there. This one here isn't customised to his size, shaft flex or lie angle. So let's see what happens when we put it in his hands. Come on Ray, let's swing that away. Give it my best shot. Okay, so it's hit pretty solid. Okay, so when you're looking at that, he's got good club speed, angle of attack's nice, path is good, it flared a little bit out to the right, which is really interesting. That's a five iron hit, but we are talking about lie angle before. Now this one was a little shorter, so to explain that one, that's that club traveling through the ground, where this is hitting the ground, spinning out on him a little bit there. So realistically, that's gone about 20, 20 yards right of the target on a center strike, and with good path and good ball speed. Now. Let's put it up against a, a seven iron that suits him and let's see what happens to the direction but also the distance. Well, he feels a little nicer. Okay, that was hit pretty good. All right, so there you go. We've got same speed. Now it's a little bit of a draw. Um, Ball speed, very, very similar. Carry distance, very, very similar to a five iron, guys. So realistically, when you're talking about it now, five iron versus seven iron. Realistically, we should see a good 20 to 25 meters of difference there in carry. That's not total, that's carry distance. So modern day for something that's a little bit old, proof's in the pudding, guys. Come down and get fitted today. You'll not only get a distance change, but direction and shape can also change with an upgrade as well.